Your computer is a mess. Your downloads folder, chaos. Your desktop, a digital landfill. And don't even get me started on your email inbox. I've seen this happen over and over. Busy professionals drowning in digital clutter. Wasting hours searching for files, sorting emails and trying to organize notes across five different apps. But here's the thing, you don't need weeks to fix this. I've been helping people clean up and streamline their digital lives for years and I've developed a rapid decluttering system that can wipe out years of mess in just one hour without getting stuck overthinking it. Before I show you the step-by-step -step system to wipe out years of digital clutter, there's something you need to hear. This mess is costing you more than you think. Every time you waste 5, 10, 15 minutes searching for a lost file, an old email or a scattered note, you're slowly bleeding hours. And the worst part, it never stops. The longer you ignore it, the more overwhelming it becomes. But here's the good news. In just 60 minutes, you can reset your entire digital life, clear out the mess and put an end to this chaos once and for all. As you probably know, but maybe don't want to admit, right now your digital mess is slowing you down. But we're about to wipe it out fast with a simple three-step system. And the best thing, implementing this and getting you back in control will not even take an hour. But before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter via the link in the description below. Because if your digital life is chaos, so your inbox, notes and task management might be as well. But you're not alone and my newsletter is here to help. Every week I share quick, practical productivity and Microsoft 365 tips to cut the busy work and help you take back control of your day. So sign up now via the link below. So before we try to organize anything, we need to clear the mess first. Trying to sort things while they are still in front of you is slow and overwhelming. Instead, the fastest way to get through it is to move everything out of sight first. This forces speed and stops you from overthinking every file, email or note. Start with your files, create a folder called clean slate or whatever and move everything from your desktop downloads and cluttered documents into this folder. Don't waste time deciding where each file belongs right now. Just get them off your screen so you have a clean workspace. Next, tackle your inbox. Select everything other than six months and move it to an archive folder. If your inbox is a complete mess, you can go even further, archive everything that isn't urgent or part of your current to-dos or projects. You can always search for what you need later. For notes, create a sort later section in OneNote or Loop and move every scattered, uncategorized note into it. This immediately cleans up your workspace so only active, relevant notes remain visible. If you have older notes that might be useful later but aren't relevant now, keep them in this temporary section until you're ready to sort them properly in one of the next steps. And now tackle your tasks. Move all lingering to-dos into a review later list in Microsoft To Do. For planner users, archive completed projects and remove yourself from any shared plans that are no longer relevant. The goal here isn't to organize, just to get outdated tasks out of your way so you can focus on what actually matters. So in just a few minutes, you've wiped out the clutter and given yourself a clean slate to work from. Now let's get rid of the chunk. Once everything is out of your sight, it's time to be ruthless. The goal here in step two isn't to organize yet. It's to eliminate anything you don't need so you don't waste time sorting chunk. Think of this as cutting dead weights so you're only left with what's actually useful. Open your clean slate folder and sort everything by file size first. Start with the biggest files like old videos, large PDFs, outdated project documentation. These take up the most space and are usually the biggest offenders. Delete anything you haven't used in over a year unless it's absolutely necessary for reference. Then sort by last modified date and do a second round of cuts. If you don't recognize the file and haven't touched it in a weeks or month, you don't need it. 
For duplicate files, use a third-party tool or Windows Storage Sense, which automatically detects and removes redundant files to free up space. Just open Storage Sense in Windows settings, enable automatic cleanup and let it scan for duplicate or unnecessary temporary files. If you've saved the same file in multiple spaces, keep the most recent version and delete the rest. If you systematically sort your dumped documents by different criteria like file size, last modified date or type and clear out unnecessary files, you'll quickly see their number in your clean slate folder shrink, making the progress far more efficient. Now let's tackle your Outlook inbox. If you followed step one and moved all the emails into an archive folder, you can leave them as they are. The focus now is on keeping your inbox organized moving forward. The next step will help with the structuring in just a bit, but in the meantime you can do the following. Reduce future clutter by unsubscribing from emails you don't need and setting up rules to filter emails into designated folders. In Outlook you can do this by selecting an email, right-clicking on Rules and choosing Always move message from this sender to a specific folder, for example. This helps prevent distractions and keep only essential emails in view. Reduce future clutter by unsubscribing from emails you don't need. To do so, you can use Outlook's Manage Subscription function in the new Outlook version. If you're still using Outlook Classic, you will need to manually unsubscribe from all those newsletters. And finally, make sure your inbox stays manageable by thinking about creating specific categories for you to manage your incoming messages. Think about creating just a few simple categories such as red for external clients or meetings, blue for internal ones, green for learning and development and yellow for personal topics. By using such categories going forward, your calendar and inbox will make important emails or meetings stand out from others. Now, when it comes to purging your notes, first go back to your sort later section in OneNote or Loop. Open each note and ask yourself, if it's outdated or irrelevant, delete it. If it's important, move it to the correct section. And if you're not sure what the correct section is or where to move a file, wait until we've covered step three of the process in just a bit. Finally, open Microsoft To-Do or Planner and scroll through your tasks. Delete anything that's been sitting unfinished for a month. If it was important, you would have done it by now. If a to-do was just there as a reminder, reschedule it or make it clear it's not an actual to-do. For example, by using a specific hashtag or moving it into a dedicated folder. For tasks you still need but don't need to see every day, snooze them or move them to a backlog list so they stop cluttering your priorities. In addition, in Planner, archive completed projects and remove any old tasks that no longer need action. Now that you've cleared the clutter and removed everything unnecessary, it's time to set up a structure that keeps your files, emails, notes and tasks organized moving forward. The goal is simple. Create a system that's easy to maintain so you never have to deal with digital chaos again. Now go back to your clean slate folder. After having deleted all the clutter and redundant files, start moving the remaining relevant ones into a simple intuitive folder structure. The key here is to keep it straightforward. Three to five main folders should be enough. A solid starting point to organize your files and folders at work could be main folders for projects, for active assignments, clients, for client-specific information or reports, resources, for reference material, and admin, which includes subfolders for internal documents, policies and procedures, or financials. Keeping this structure simple ensures you can quickly access what you need without excessive sorting. Within each main folder or subfolder, create additional folders only if necessary. The key is to keep it simple so you can always find what you need in seconds without over-organizing. And just as your folders, your inbox also should no longer be a dumping ground for everything. To prevent emails from piling up again, create three core folders. Action needed, which includes emails requiring a response or follow-up. The second folder is waiting on, which includes emails where you're waiting for someone else's reply or other information you need to answer the email. 
And the third folder is for reference, including emails you may need later but don't require action now. You might also choose to add a fourth folder such as one for completed tasks or tailor the folder setup to better suit your workflow. Another approach I often recommend is aligning your email folder structure with your overall folder and notes folder structure. So by mirroring your main folders for projects, clients, resources and admin in your inbox, you create a seamless organization system where emails are sorted just like your documents, making retrieval easier and reducing decision fatigue. Whatever method you are choosing, moving forward, commit to processing your inbox regularly. Each time you check emails, decide whether to reply, archive or move messages into one of these three folders. If something takes less than two minutes, respond immediately. Now let's get your notes fully organized. Taking everything from your sort later section in OneNote or Loop and move it into a structured notebook system. A practical approach is to align your notes with the structure you already use for files and emails. Create notebooks for projects, clients, resources and admin. With a neat project notebook, for example, set up subfolders for each active project to keep relevant information in one place. This way, you can quickly find what you need and avoid digging through scattered notes. When your inbox and notes follow the same structure as your files, everything connects naturally. You'll spend less time searching for documents, linking related content becomes second nature and maintaining organization feels effortless instead of a constant battle. Now let's refine your task management. There are endless approaches to managing tasks, but if you want something simple and effective, here's what to do. Open your task management tool like Microsoft To Do or Planner and create three core categories. The first is today, where you list your top priorities that you must get done. The second is this week, which includes tasks that need attention soon, but aren't immediate. The third is a backlog, where you place tasks that don't need your focus yet, but shouldn't be forgotten. This setup keeps your to-do list from getting overwhelming and ensures you stay focused on what actually matters without getting bogged down by lower priority tasks. Now that you've got a solid structure in place, the next step is making sure it stays that way without extra effort. Let's be honest, email is probably one of the biggest time drains. If your inbox still feels like a constant battle, you're probably spending way too much time sorting, replying and searching for messages. The good news, you don't have to. There are simple automations that can handle a lot of the work for you. So watch this video next and I'll show you exactly what to automate so your inbox stops ruining your day.